Welcome to everybody who is uh, joining us today. My name is Jason Grillo, the event director for Air Miners. It's great to see uh, so many people who've signed up for uh, our hot pitch event. So this event came about uh, from, uh, from uh, think some thinking that Jeremy did about how to uh, foster uh, entrepreneurship in carbon removal. Uh, we realized uh, that getting practice for entrepreneurs to pitch their ideas is a critical function of uh, making sure that ideas are condensed and able to uh, be communicated rapidly and clearly. So with that, um, uh, we're going to have uh, 15 pitch slots available today. Uh, we've got 15 people who signed up. We had a couple of cancellations, so there's still slots available for right now, right here, if people want to jump in last minute. Uh, but uh, we are excited to have two minute pitches uh, from participants today. We're going to record this and ask uh, all of the participants in our uh, in our event today to provide feedback on the pitches as they occur. So with that, I'm going to uh, come back at the tail end of uh, the hour today to have a couple of very, very special Air Miners announcements. But until then, I'm going to uh, let Jeremy, our MC, take it from here. Jeremy. Thank you, Jason. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, and I guess now that we do have a few open slots, if anybody does want to jump in, um, hadn't planned on it, but, but says, what the heck, uh, we would love that. So. Feel free to uh, DM Jason through Zoom and we can arrange for that. Or maybe you've got a second company and uh, you wanna pitch two things, that's that's fine too. So we have, a, we have some openings. Um, as Jason said, my name is Jeremy Epstein, owner of Mesh Energy Consulting and moderator of the Business Lab Slack channel through Air Miners. I'll be your host and MC today. Um, and we've got Jason and, and Tito, Air Miners own on here as well. Um, as Jason said, he'll be kind of wrapping things up at the end of the pitches and uh, making a few very cool announcements. Uh, so just a few kind of housekeeping rules and then we can really just jump in. Uh, but the way that we're gonna run today's session uh, is, so rule number one is not a competition. Um, this is actually the first hot pitch session that we'll be running, uh, hopefully first of many. So uh, consider this V1.0 or our MVP of a hot pitch session and uh, we can only improve on this. So. Um, that leads me to point number two. Um, after that, this is not a competition. Um, there is a feedback form. So feedback on a couple of things. Uh, one is how are we doing? How was this event? Uh, the other is feedback on specific pitches. So everyone who had previously signed up to present today um, will have a feedback slot. So you can put your candid feedback in there. Make sure that's constructive and uh, kind. And um, you know, if you want to get in touch with someone, feel free to do that in one of a couple ways. You can use that feedback form to drop your email or preferred contact method in there. Uh, we'll make sure that gets to the pitch presenter. Uh, the other way would be just to uh, reach out through Zoom uh, direct messaging uh, and Zoom chat. So um, however you want to get in touch with folks. So we want this to be iterative. We want to make sure that you all are getting plenty of value out of it, um, in addition to just practicing your pitch. Uh, so uh, I think this was in the invite, but if you're looking for uh, teammates, co-founders, funding, that would be great either to work that into your pitch. Uh, and if you haven't already, just make sure that that's part of your introduction when you jump on for your two minutes. Um, so that brings me to point number three, two minutes. We're going to kind of hold you tight to that just so that we stay on schedule, don't run over, respect everybody's time and kind of level the playing field. So at the minute 30 mark, you should receive a some sort of notification from Jason uh, in the chat. Is that right, Jason? Yes, yes, Okay. 90 cool. seconds and in. Great, and then once two minutes hits and I'll, uh, I'll have my stopwatch going here. Uh, I will gently let you know that uh, it's time to finish up your sentence and be done. So that just ensures that everyone's got uh, the same amount of time to present. Uh, we already covered the Google form. Uh, again, if you're presenting, just make sure you start off with what's your name? What are you calling your company now? It doesn't have to be what you're gonna call it later. Uh, so what are you calling your venture? And uh, 
contact info. Um, yeah, just you know, if you drop that into the chat, maybe just let folks know uh, in case they're interested to follow up with you. I know we've got quite a few spectators on this, and some folks may be interested in funding your venture. You never know, so don't don't make it hard for people to get in touch. Um, and we'll try to wrap up the presentations, you know, at least at, at five till. And um, don't forget, we've got a second one of these sessions this evening at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific. So uh, if you found this fun, exciting, interesting, you wanna see what other people are pitching, we've got a second session planned out. And uh, I would think we'll have maybe more of an international crowd uh, on that one, given the time zone. Um, so without further ado, I think we should jump in and start with uh, pitch number one. Um, I'm going over to our sheet. Numero uno, we have uh, Wilson Hago. So uh, uh, my company, Hago Energetics, uh, is in the um, business of uh, reducing uh, emissions for companies. Uh, we're doing this uh, in a multifaceted fashion. Um, we, the intention is to uh, capture, um, do two things, capture um, carbon from um, companies uh, that are emitting a lot of CO2 and also do direct air capture. So we have a, a process where the CO2 is fed uh, into a process, converts that to carbon monoxide. We also have a process where uh, biogas or, or natural gas is fed into a process to create hydrogen. We combine the hydrogen and the, and the CO and the carbon monoxide to give you uh, hydrocarbons um, and that is sold commercially. In the process, we also create a variety of carbons. Uh, we create uh, activated carbon, uh, we create carb, uh, biochar and we create uh, carbon black. And so ultimately you have a variety of, of different streams of different um, sellable products. And, and ultimately we have a carbon process that is profitable. So right now we have letters of intent from a major um, power plant. We have a letter of intent from a dairy farm in, in California. And so we have a significant traction at the moment. And so what we're look, I'm looking for is a, a co-founder uh, that can do the business side. And I'm looking for, um, uh, interested parties that can be can fund this venture. Thank you. Thanks, Wilson. That was great. Um, folks, you'll find Wilson uh, at the top of the uh, feedback form, the Google form. Uh, so uh, I'm sure he'd love your your feedback. And what I heard is that he's uh, he is looking for a co-founder. And um, I believe, did you say funding, Wilson? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're always interested in in entertaining funding. Why not? Okay, great. Well, that's exciting. Uh, thank you. We uh, we hit that under the two minute mark, so that was great. Especially uh, since you'd forgotten you were you had signed up. So uh, great job. Um, cool. Well, we'll just transition to number two again. It's a hot pitch session, so we're gonna kind of move through these quick. Second up, we've got Kim Tutton, and uh, please correct me if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Nope, that's perfect. All right. Hi, Kim. Hey. All right, you sound good. So we're gonna start your two minutes now. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Kim from Cactus Air. I'm excited to share with you an alternative emissions control technology for controlling emissions from wood drying. Current emission control devices clean the air by oxidizing or burning the emissions. This uses a tremendous amount of energy, creates greenhouse gas emissions, and is very expensive to operate. The alternative is to very efficiently adsorb and recover those same emissions using technology that's already commercial today in many applications, including automotive and electronics manufacturing. Now, there are many sites where this technology could be utilized, including oriented strand boards and wood pellet manufacturing. So what we want people to know is that our work indicates that this technology can help users to meet their air emissions control requirements, significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions, drive down operational costs, and generate revenue by transforming what would have been pollutants into valuable byproducts. Last but not least, we have a great team. I've been working with Hal and his team at Environmental CNC on this technology since 2015. Hal and his team have already commercialized this technology at over 60 sites worldwide. They have overseen fabrication, installation, commissioning, and operation. This team has the necessary capabilities, integrity, and passion to deliver. 
I hope you reach out to me to learn more. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Kim. That was great. Um, good work. And folks, uh, Kim is listed as number two on the Google Forms. So I'm sure she'd appreciate your feedback. And uh, next up, we've got Alex Wick. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me OK? Sounds good. Alex, I'll start you two minutes now. Awesome. Hey, everyone. My name is Alex Wick. I'm a forester uh, and the founder and CEO of Cascadia Carbon. Cascadia Carbon is building a carbon offset decentralized exchange called Codex that democratizes the voluntary carbon offset market, including previously excluded individuals into this $5.5 billion per year market, which is forecasted to grow over a thousand times before 2030. Now to achieve this sort of growth, the voluntary offset market needs a business model innovation. And that's where Codex comes in. We tokenize carbon negative assets on the blockchain using patented low carbon technology and allow you the individual to generate your own NFT tokens from trees or generate your own crowdsourced carbon offsets from your low carbon transportation choices. Climate change is an existential threat and we need all of us to come together and address it. So please join us, visit CascadiaCarbon.com and help make the world a better place. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Super exciting stuff that you're working on. Um, just to ask, are you looking for any of the above uh, employees, co-founders, or funding at this point? Uh, all, all of the above, but we're not really actively looking for any of this. OK, great. Thanks for letting but, us yes. know. Um, OK, thank you, Alex. Uh, Gonna reset my timer here. Next, up, next up then is Alan Witters. Hi guys, Alan Witters, CEO of Gravitas Infinitum. We've got a project called Carbatura. Carbatura, we spent two years developing. It's a bio-based carbon sequestration system. I was told there's no slides here, but I'm gonna show you what we're building. We're building very large bio factories. These are called high density bio factories. And they do basically one thing. They ca capture a lot of carbon. They turn it into biochar, activated carbon, graphene, and diamonds. It's all natural. It's a negative emissions company. Uh, we have about 80% of the first module funded. The modules are around $100 million each. And we're working with the DOE on a uh, guarantee for around $600 million to build a campus right now. We are looking for investors, uh, mezzanine capital, uh, debt primarily, and uh, this project's probably going to break ground uh, late this year. Some of the, anything to add to that? Yeah, some of the cool things are is that it uh, can capture 350 tons per module of carbon per day, and uh, it comes in at about fifty dollars per ton. Uh, on uh, from an amortization perspective. It creates hundred, hundreds of different jobs. And it's pretty much the most efficient DAX on the market today uh, in coming at those prices. Excellent. Uh, anything else to wrap up, Alan? It's, it's great stuff. Any questions, I'll answer. Thank you. Okay, great. It looks like you're already getting some questions in the chat. So um, just, just a heads up, people are, people are interested. Uh, great work. Thank you, Alan. Next up, we've got Lee Schneiberg. And uh, correct me if I mispronounced anything, Lee. I've been working for over two decades, first doing documentaries about climate change and solutions to stopping climate change. And then for the past year, I've been developing this project, Stone Age Soil, with a few of the people that I've known for since I've interviewed them decades ago. Um, what we're doing is looking at, at, at rock dust and soil remineralization as a way to take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Um, it was recently re peer reviewed, well, about a year, a year ago, finally, 
peer reviewed and it was in nature that using rock dust in agricultural soils can, can um, both from, from uh, the, um, the rock weathering, but also from the biomass increase in the soil, um, that it can take gigatons of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And there's presently over 30 different companies in North America that are doing rock dust, um, that are selling rock dust to farmers. And, uh, but they're all pretty much, you know, mom and pop operations. The largest one is out of Vermont, but it's, it's still fairly small. And I've been talking with the main person who's the um, sort of the, the, the mother load of all the rock dust information in North America. And we've been trying to develop this way that we could create a consortium so that we gather all of the talents together and create a way to get soil remineralization to be used um, by the lion's share of farmers in, in North America and, and worldwide. So that's the project. Um, it, it's really sort of a strapling right now. And we're looking to build a team of people who can handle um, the uh, administrative sides of it, the, the pitching to fundraisers and a way to keep everybody um, organized as one collective group. That, that's the pitch. Um, one Great. thing to add though. Well, and that was two minutes actually. So um, do you want to, one last sentence? We'll let you wrap up. Oh, definitely. Um, not only does it take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, but it renew, re, re, it, it makes it um, so that you don't need to use chemical agri chemical fertilizers or pesticides or fungicides, and it produces healthier crops and greater yields. Excellent. All right. Super exciting stuff. Thank you, Lee. Um, again, folks, if you want to follow up with Lee or anyone else, you can do so uh, by leaving your information in the Google form, or you can utilize the Zoom chat features. Uh, next up, Dylan Maxwell for pitch number seven of the day. Uh, my, my intern, Ludovic, who's here, he's gonna pitch. Uh, we have different pitches. Uh, it's more important he, he pitched than me. I'm just wondering if it's okay for two people from the same company to pitch or not. Sure, are you gonna be doing two separate pitches? Uh, we, do two have separate open, pitches. we do have open slots. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, um, okay great. So, so yeah, if your intern's going to go first, then why don't we have him introduce himself, and then we'll do this as two two separate pitches. So um, you'll actually go next, Dylan. Yes, I'm here. Okay, welcome. Hello. Um, go ahead. I'll start you two minutes. Go ahead and, and introduce yourself, and um, let's hear the pitch. So hi everyone. My name is Ludovic. Uh, this pitch is directed to health food companies that make their own product. So our company, New Earth, would like to offer you a free carbon footprint analysis. And we also ho hope that you list your product's carbon footprint on your website and hopefully on your label. So concretely, what is it about? Biochar is an environmentally produced charcoal typically used to improve soil fertility. fertility. It's roughly 70% uh, carbon. And when biochar is added to the soil, carbon remains trapped for thousands of years rather than returning to the atmosphere then this will lower the amount of CO2 in the air. Our car carbon trading platform is unique. Uh, for one, it incorporates a green social network, carbonface.org, where everyone can see the good environmental things individuals and companies are doing. And this is also a place where more people can find out, can find out sorry, about your products. Thereafter, through the peer-to-peer -peer carbon trading platform on carbonface.org, you can also be put in relation with people uh, who bury biochar directly uh, all over the world. So people can buy voluntary carbon credits and offset uh, their carbon credits. When making a choice between products, environmental uh, factors are often considered, particularly in the health food sector. Eventually, all products will most likely be monitored to list their carbon footprint to make this, this, this decision easier. But at this point, since nobody uh, yet lists their footprint, the company that is green enough to do so will probably be considered as one of the first movers and will be known as a leader in sustainable business. In other words, uh, just having carbon footprint listed will give, you, will give your company an edge. And why are we willing to provide this service for free? Our hope is that you offset some of your footprint on our peer-to-peer -peer carbon trading platform. However, you do, you do not need to spend a cent 
just giving your customers the opportunity for them to take the responsibility to offset their own purchases will be doing a great service to the planet and hopefully uh, put business in our way. The compensations- you, it's at, uh, we're, at, we're at two minutes. So I'll give you one more sentence oh. and then we're gonna wrap up. So uh, together we will be able to participate in raising awareness of society and why not encourage other organizations or industries to follow the path of carbon neutrality. Thank you. Excellent. All right, well done. Um, so Ludovic just presented. Uh, I don't think we have him yet on the form, um, but uh, it seems like he and, and Dylan are, are on uh, somewhat in cahoots here. So if you got specific uh, feedback, and I hope you do for Ludovic, uh, you can put that and just make sure it's clear in uh, Dylan Maxwell's feedback form. Um, and then that would also be where you can Put direct feedback or, or or Jeremy, I can substitute Ludovic for uh, Peter Coughlin since Peter Coughlin uh, canceled. Ah, the... Okay, so all right, so Jason is going to live edit the form. You may have to refresh your browser, and then um, you'll see Ludovic's name uh, up at uh, at the pitch number four slot. So if you get some feedback for him, uh, you'll find him as the pitch number four um, in a, in a minute or so here. Uh, Thank and you. Then next Thank up. You. Uh, we'll have uh, Dylan Maxwell. Dylan, are you pitching as well? Uh, yes, sure. Why not? Okay. Um, so as Go you ahead. said, okay. So um, as Ludovic said, we have a uh, carbon trading uh, platform. Uh, you can see it at uh, carbonface.org. Um, we have a, a connected social um, network, which I would like to encourage everyone to join and to put a, a profile picture up. Um, and uh, that uh, you can go directly to uh, carbonfacesocial.org. And um, my pitch, we, we want everyone to join and we want everyone to offset their, um, their carbon footprint. Um, of course, everyone here is probably uh, doing that through their own uh, endeavors. Um, but uh, one of the pitches that we'll be making will be to people who actually uh, bury biochar um, we just have a few people up there now because we're not, we haven't really launched yet. Uh, we're still working on the website. Uh, but these people um, will be uh, asking people uh, who uh, bury biochar uh, to, uh, to uh, post on our social network and to receive our tokens, char tons of char kilos. So I only have uh, 40 seconds, uh, 50 seconds left, but I'll, I'll do that. Um, so um, I'd first like to say I'm impressed by your um, the efforts you do to uh, sequester carbon from the atmosphere in making biochar, and um, I would like uh, to ask you to to post your uh, the 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 bearing of biochar. The, you're making a biochar. You're putting into measurable containers, and then the bearing of that biochar into the soil uh, or manure or, or water, and to um, to join our social network to post that picture in our unmining form. And then we'll, we will reward you with the, the char charge of char kilos, which then uh, you can sell um, to the general public through our social network. And unfortunately that is the end of my two minutes. So thank you very much. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Dylan. Um, next up, we've got Elliot Roth for pitch slot uh, number nine. Hello. Um, so I think one of the challenges in carbon capture is that our ambition has to be broad enough to really pull down a gigatons of CO2 from the atmosphere. And one of the most substantial contributions of that CO2 is from building materials of which you would be able to offset and capture dozens of gigatons over the next 10 years. Um, and so what I'm presenting today is a methodology to create building materials, particularly carbonate, one of the main components of cement, using carbonic and hydrase, an engineered enzyme. This is a spinoff of my company, Spira, which focuses on the genetic engineering of algae. We've developed a directed evolution, uh, directed evolution enzyme of carbonic and hydrase um, in conjunction with Cadexis as a means of fixing it to engineered algae to create carbonate simply, cheaply, and effectively uh, specifically initially to feed our algae. And now we're looking to apply it uh, at point uh, capture sources uh, as a means of creating carbonates uh, to capture CO2 from the environment. Our first use case is actually in one of the most important places where you need to capture CO2, space. 
And using that high value system, we aim to come down in overall cost to have this uh, reactor fed system uh, attached to point emission sources at different kinds of power plants. Um, and so if you're interested in helping out, we're looking for power plant customers, uh, in addition to teammates in bioengineering and chemical engineering, um, all and uh, 20K to really build a prototype that is actively going to be launched into space. Uh, we estimate a solution like this starting out based around CO2 solutions, which has an example, carbonic and hydrase capture system is about 20 to $40 per metric ton of CO2 uh, captured with uh, that being a pilot system. So that'll come down in cost. Uh, this can be used to accelerate the CO2 storage uh, and create mineralization of carbon in the solid capture system to store that overall in the ocean. And we really envision this system and this enzyme engineering system to be used in a variety of other sort of applications uh, for enzyme driven systems. So uh, thank Two you minutes, so much. Elliot. All right, right on the mark, great job. Uh, super interesting stuff. Thank you, Elliot Roth. Uh, again, you guys can uh, put your info. I'm sure he'll follow up uh, if you put that into the form. Otherwise, uh, reach out in the chat and uh, we will move on to our next presenter. Next up, we've got Ardia. Ardia? Hi. Welcome. Hi. And uh, your two minutes starts now. Cool. So my name is Ardia. I am the founder and CEO of Polima. And Polima is the world's first carbon negative furniture company. We are pressing hemp into a wood alternative to help consumers have a beautiful home, guilt-free, that reduces their carbon footprint. So as you know, to avoid the worst impacts of climate change, we get to draw down carbon from every angle possible. So yes, sure, direct air capture, carbon sequestration, and I believe also regenerative manufacturing. And every industry needs to be taking action on this to be lessening their carbon footprint. Uh, so even furniture has a carbon footprint. Uh, the carbon footprint of the average table uh, is 50 pounds of CO2. And that's where Polima comes in. So by collecting regional hemp byproduct and pressing it into high-end furniture, we're able to make a product that keeps CO2 from going into the air. Uh, there's about 1 billion pounds of cannabis waste in California alone. And if, it, if it's burned, uh, that releases CO2 in that, into the atmosphere. And we're able to pick up this free byproduct and turn it into carbon negative profit that at the end of life can be made into biochar. And the market is ready. Millennials are buying their first homes. 38% uh, of home buyers are millennials. And we've calculated that for every 1,000 tables, we are preventing 162,000 pounds of CO2 from being released into the air. Yet no other company is often offering carbon negative furniture. So as of right now, we're in the first step of product development. I purchased our hydraulic press and launched the furniture designs publicly. Our team hails from hospitality furniture companies, Google X, Nike, and Lionsgate. And we're seeking 150K to finish the prototype and spend on a Indiegogo launch and looking to connect with biochar experts, complete. <laughs> right on time, Ardia, great job. Um, and uh, Ardia actually has been a presenter on our Business Model Lab calls. So if you wanna hear more about uh, what she's doing at Polima, uh, you can check it out on the Air Miners YouTube channel or the Mesh Energy Consulting YouTube channel, same video, uh, two places. All right, uh, next up, we have got uh, uh, Petri Las Laxo. Petri. Hi. Yeah, Welcome. my name is Petri Laxo, and I'm the CEO at Solitaire Power. We make people more productive in offices and turn captured CO2 into renewable fuels. I guess everyone has felt sometimes tired in a meeting, and I bet that it was partly because of the CO2 in the air. Nature is affected by the CO2 in the air, and, and so are people too. Indoor CO2 is proven to reduce the cognitive function uh, by 20% by every 400 ppm increase in the air. This equals a loss of thousands of dollars per person per year at workplaces. Since outdoor CO2 is rising constantly, it's making the problem even worse indoors. We have a team that has founded more than 10 companies and made several successful exits with a really diverse technological background and experience from these previous startups. 
With our CO2 negative process, we can capture CO2 from building ventilation to make people more productive and well-being in offices. And this captured CO2 can be combined with hydrogen to create synthetic fuels. And when the building is acting as a carbon sink, it will help achieve a carbon neutral society. Equipment can be sold as equipment or as a service for one to two dollars per day per employee. And in modern buildings, one cannot typically open the window anymore and the ventilation enforcement is always possible. And 90% of the buildings now used in 2050 already been built. So there's still a huge business ahead of us. Uh, we sold our first commercial unit last year and now we are building the second one and we are creating completely new market and business in CO2 capturing in, in buildings and benefit for employees. We got a one and a half millions of seed funding plus loans and grants on top of that. And we are looking for serious A round targeted next year, Q2, after finishing two key projects this year. Thank you. Thank you, Petri. Uh, folks interested in following up with Petri uh, on, on the form or direct message. Um, and it looks like, uh, all right, next up then would be Paul Anderson. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Anderson, also known as Dr. Tila because of my 20 years of work with regard to cook stoves that make gas for cooking and create biochar as a byproduct. I am working on biochar as my selected preference for um, air mining. The trees take it out of the air and biochar makes it a permanent uh, sequestration, uh, uh, keeps the sequestration permanent. I do a small scale types of operations, uh, cook stoves, but also in the medium size. So if you are interested at all in biochar, you want to reach me. My website is up there and I'm oh, sorry, my, and my email address is there. The, um, uh, and, and so if you're into biochar, also dealing with carbon sequestration credit, this is not the emission reduction, this is carbon sequestration, please call me. I live in Illinois, but I work worldwide. So I'm hoping to approach many of you. If you are a big investor, you have the money, you're looking to do something, please contact me because there are some possible projects that could be of interest, but I'm not going to elaborate on them. If you're a small person, small um, operation, not yet decided on your technology that you're going to be using, you'd want to go with possibly the rock kiln, R-O-C-C -C kiln, which is, you can find it described at the woodgas.energy slash resources uh, website. Uh, it's a, a flame cap and it produces good, very good quality biochar. The, I would like you to spend your money in your place for you to do it with some of the technology help that I can give you. You build your operations if you're interested in the biochar side of things. So uh, if you don't put your email into the little feedback sheet, then you must contact me because I otherwise won't reach you. So my time is up. Thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from you. And my company is Wood Gas Pyrolytics. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Paul. That was great. Uh, I don't think folks will have a hard time getting in touch uh, if that's what they want to do. So that was great. Jeremy, this is Alan. Hi, hey, Alan. I have another company I could talk about. Yeah, you've got two minutes. Let's do it. Yeah, I think it's going to be presented tonight, but it's called T4L, Transportation for Life. We uh, decided to spin up a uh, electric vehicle subscription company last year. We're just starting to take pre-orders. Uh, we've got about a million and a half in pre-orders already. We seed funded it with about 900,000. We have a WeFunder offering out there, and it prevents 10,000 pounds of carbon per vehicle per year from going into the atmosphere. And we're only doing electric vehicles, Tesla's and Nissan right now, and we're working on Porsches and VWs and a few others. Excellent, will you give us the name of the company? If that's it, I uh, don't wanna cut you off, but would you give us the name of the company one more time before you wrap it up? It's called T4L, Transportation for Life. You can see it at t4l.me. We have a WeFunder offering out there that we've uh, oversubscribed by three times. 
and uh, people can come in with a hundred bucks or a hundred thousand, doesn't matter. And uh, we're probably gonna take that company public this year. So it's Excellent. a fun one. All right, thanks for sharing, Alan. First up is Robert Tulip. My work's about using hydroxyl chemistry to remove methane. Our company is Iron Salt Aerosol, Proprietary Limited, and we're looking for small scale investor backing to prove our concept, which has got massive global cooling potential. Our work's all about copying natural chemical methods that cool the planet. Our chemical reactions in the atmosphere convert greenhouse gases, such as methane, into materials with far lower global warming potential. And replicating these natural methods can generate carbon credits as a profitable enterprise. We started off a couple of years ago with iron salt aerosol, which oxidizes about 5% of natural methane. And our scientific colleagues wrote a paper in 2017 explaining the multiple likely cooling effects of doubling the natural iron salt aerosol production. But measuring the effects to get carbon credits has proved harder than expected. So we've looked for the simplest and safest, quickest and cheapest way to copy atmospheric chemistry for cooling. That led us to hydroxyls for methane removal. Now in nature, hydroxyl radicals remove about 95% of methane. So about 10 years ago, there was a new industry that emerged using hydroxyl generator machines to remove odors from buildings. The hydroxyl will scavenge for the smelly chemical and destroy it. But this concept hasn't yet been used, used for cooling credits. So we took a provisional Australian patent out this year for using hydroxyls to cut emissions from methane and from fluorine compounds. Our idea is to find point sources such as farms, landfills, mines, refrigeration systems, which have emissions that are hard to abate. For example, a 1% methane flow can't be used for energy, but piping hydroxyls into this flow will cause a simple, permanent, verifiable, measurable emission reduction, which right, is Bobby, readily eligible. A few minutes, um, time to wrap up. Red, readily eligible for commercial and government carbon offset funding. So please contact me if you'd like to invest in small commercial bench stop tests to prove this concept. And then we're looking to convert our provisional patent into full patent protect, protection of the intellectual property and find commercial partners to deploy this cooling technology. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Robbie. Great stuff. Uh, off to a, a, a great start. I think I dropped off there for a minute, uh, but I am back now. Um, just looking at the chat, uh, looks like some folks are wondering what the order is, which is a very fair question. If you're presenting, you can actually find the order on the feedback form. So we're just going from top to bottom on that. Uh, so yeah, the feedback form link is in the chat if you want to see what order you're going in. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, I only just worked out how to put my video on. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. All right. Well, thank you, Robbie. Um, Next up will be Salvador Garcia. Hello, good evening or good, yeah, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Uh, phytoplankton in our ocean absorb 30% of the world's CO2 emissions and produce 50% of the oxygen we breathe through a process called photosynthesis. But due to climate change, our oceans are warming, producing less phytoplankton and destabilizing our climate and marine ecosystems. If we're to solve climate change, we must harness the power of the oceans and phytoplankton. Uh, we've developed a renewable wave energy powered pump that upwells cold nutrient rich seawater from 500 meters deep. Each pump can fertilize enough phytoplankton to remove 250 tons of carbon dioxide per year. And this is verifiable with biogeochemical instrumentation and at a long term cost of under $10 per ton of CO2 removed, lasting decades. These pumps are more effective than any carbon capture technology on the market now. And best of all, they are safe because the process is natural. Photosynthesis is happening today, everywhere across the globe, and most particularly in our oceans. Our customers are public corporations wanting to become CO2 neutral and governments looking to meet, their, uh, to meet or exceed their Paris Climate Accords uh, promises. Uh, we are a team of engineers, ocean scientists, and climate youth, and we're looking to raise $5 million to deploy our first array of 20 pumps so that we can begin the commercialization process now. Uh, we're currently awaiting uh, the, a response from Stripe for um, a request for proposal, and Microsoft has uh, invited us for a second round uh, for their next RFP. Uh, the world and our children and our grandchildren can't wait. Uh, our company is Ocean-Based Climate Solutions, and you can learn more about us at 
uh, ocean-base.com. That's ocean dash B-A-S-E-D.com. And you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Thank you. All right, Salvador, great stuff. Um, and uh, thanks for making it clear what you're looking for. It looks like uh, funding is of interest to you. So I'll just um, remind folks, you know, we want to make sure you're getting something out of this. So if you're looking for a co-founder, for a teammate, for funding, uh, it's good to make sure you mention that either when you're introducing yourself and your company, or if it's baked into your pitch, that's fine too. But um, let us know so that we can, we can help you. Um, thanks again, Salvador. Next up, we've got uh, Gary Haggerty. Next up will be Ray Furman. Ray? Hi, my name is Ray Furman, and I am the CEO and founder of Stingray Sensing. We are a consulting firm and tech startup based in Santa Barbara, California, focused on developing a low-cost environmental monitoring system for restorative uh, aquaculture practices. So we are commercializing a number of technologies that have been federally funded through the National Science Foundation and the Department of Energy with over $10 million. Uh, and we are technology integrators. So essentially what we're doing is taking off the shelf hardware and integrating it into a low cost buoy with um, a universal sensor port such that any sensor can be connected and uh, integrating a number of softwares for monitoring uh, ocean crops. So the idea is to bring smart farming into the ocean as well as uh, do risk mitigation. So ensure that your uh, ensure that your farm is not going to be a navigational hazard or that whales will be entangled or any of the numerous other issues that can be uh, problematic in terms of acquiring and maintaining permits, especially where we're fit, uh, based here in California. Um, there have been tremendous permitting issues and so we're kind of focused on uh, surmounting those issues through real-time low-cost monitoring with an underwater system, uh, drone monitoring with hyperspectral imaging, as well as high-resolution satellite monitoring. Um, I am looking for a CTO and potential co-founder, as well as um, angel investment. And uh, two minutes. I think that's my time. Yeah. All right, Ray. Thank you so much. Two ocean-based companies in a row. Exciting stuff. Algal-based, not just ocean-based. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, <laughs> correction. Because algae is the best. We love algae. Who doesn't love thank algae? So much for us. All right. Well, thank you, Ray. Thank you so much. Next up, we have got... All right. Next up, we've got Lucy Lowe. Lucy, are you with us? Hi. Yes, I'm here. There she is. All right, Lucy, your two minutes starts now. Hi, great. Uh, my name is Lucy from farmernet.org. We are working on a computer vision precision agriculture startup. Um, we are a team based out of Waterloo and MIT, in addition to Illumini from Y Combinator. We're working on a startup to empower farmers by building a climate resilient food chains and sustainably feeding the 10 billion people that we're going to have by the year 2050. And in order to do this, we have to adjust for climate change and uh, carbon sequestration. So we're using precision agriculture for this, specifically IoT, blockchain, and computer vision, so AI. Um, the computer vision technology we're working on is mainly to help farmers save water. And we do this with, um, so building on, uh, on top of Ray's uh, previous pitch, we're using aerial maps as well for irrigation maps. Um, in addition to crop detection to identify pests, diseases, and fertilities. And we do this by measuring the color changes, mechanical damage, nutrient deficiency, water stress, and soil compactation of the plants themselves. In addition, we, we're also on the Ethereum blockchain. So we're working on NFTs, so non-fungible tokens for carbon credits on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, so we've uh, received funding from uh, Bill and Melinda Gates found farm, Smart Farming Innovation, so $250,000 and $100,000 from the 
UNICEF Innovation Fund and 25K from VCs. And we're looking to hire specifically machine learning engineers. Um, we have a team of really, really smart people. So if you're interested, reach out. Lucy at farmernet.org. I'll put in the chat. Thanks, Lucy. Great stuff. Uh, and under the two minute mark, very succinct. Um, <clears throat> and if you want to follow up with Lucy, uh, she's got her contact info going into the chat now, I think. So um, thank you again. Next up, we have Kevin Kung. Thank you, Jeremy. I'm Kevin, uh, co founder and CTO of Takachar. Uh, where our mission is, is to turn trash into cash. Um, so most crop and forest residues, which we call biomass, is often very loose, wet and bulky, which makes it very difficult and expensive to centralize and collect to a place where you can actually convert it into useful products. For that reason, many rural communities are shut out from the benefits of the bioeconomy. So we are developing small scale, low cost portable systems that can latch onto the back of tractors and pickup trucks and that can deploy uh, to rural hard to access regions to locally upgrade and densify the residues on site into a higher value and customizable bioproducts, thereby uh, eliminating most of the logistical costs associated with that biomass. So uh, we have two asks. The first is that um, we are uh, looking to get um, more ride-alongs with vegetation managers uh, for electric utilities who are often clearing some of their vegetation for uh, wildfire prevention. So we're looking for contacts there. And number two, we are hiring a full-time uh, principal fire breather. Um, you don't have to have a college degree to do that, but you need to be very hands-on and to work with our prototype and also uh, some experience with um, testing biomass in the field is preferred. If you have any questions, uh, send me an email at kevin at takachar, T-A-K-A-C-H-A-R.com. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin at takachar.com. Um, all right. Well, uh, we're moving along. Uh, next up, then, is Eli Rabani. Eli. So my name is Eli Rabani. I'm the founder of Nanotechnology International Corporation. For a long time, I've been working on methods to build things out of individual atoms and molecules. To get anywhere at that, uh, in terms of scale, you have to master exponential methodologies and manufacturing techniques, especially self-replicating systems. At the beginning, at the beginning of 2018, I was encouraged to think about how to apply these methodologies and specifically your closure self-replicating systems to the problem of solving ocean acidification and ocean hypoxia as well as atmospheric carbon. The solution is to build <clears throat> highly efficient photobioreactors to grow biomass using the most the fastest growing organisms in all of nature, that is nanoplankton and microalgae, under optimal conditions, and then process this biomass into useful, useful materials, including food, feed, biochar, biocomposites, bio and high-performance building materials, including the materials that these systems are made of. And these systems include advanced flexible manufacturing capability so that they can use those materials to essentially make copies of themselves. Under a reasonable set of parameters, a system such as this can have a doubling time of between 27 and 70 days. And starting from, say, a square kilometer could expand to approximately 2% of the ocean under well under a decade. And at that point, we'd be able to capture and convert over 100 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year. I'm looking for two, investment two minutes. people. Finish your sentence. Um, consortium part, partners. I'm sorry. Actually, repeat your last sentence because I think I talked over you. So, give. I think you were just kind of laying out your ass. I'm, I'm looking. Go ahead. I'm looking for immediate investment and people and consortium partners. All right. Thank you, Eli. Thank you. And I'll put my information in the chat. Sounds good. Eli's information will be in the chat. And next up, we have Paul Anderson. Hi, I'm Paul Anderson. I work with Biochar. I've got a little thing here. It shows my email address, Pete Sanders 
www.ilksu.edu and a website for my company. And we're dealing with uh, biomass. I er talked this morning about the rock kiln that we have there looking for investors or people that want to work on putting them projects into their own areas. You'll find information about that at the website. I want to mention specifically now the uh, white paper, which I have there at the same website. It's 52 pages. It discusses all of the many different aspects of how we can get, uh, a, we're looking, shooting for a quarter gigaton of CO2 uh, emission reductions from it it's called climate intervention with biochar. Uh, the, I am more, very much interested in talking with uh, Kevin. He already had his pitch and I'm pitching back to you, Kevin. We'll, we'll discuss some things further. If you're interested in overseas areas where uh, people are uh, in poverty, working with the sustainable development goals and things like that, I have projects in India, Africa, and there's places around in the States, which obviously are different cultural uh, 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 situation into there. So I look forward to hearing from some of you and uh, enjoy the air miners very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. Uh, that's one for biochar. Uh, I think we've had three for algae. Uh, super cool. Glad to see a mix of solutions being presented here today. Next up, we have Jack Sullivan. Hello, Jack. Hello. All right. You two My name is Jack start. Sullivan. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, your two minutes starts. Go, go for it. My name is Jack Sullivan. I'm the founder of the startup Red Carbon. Um, Proud to be the only two-time Carby Award nominee. It was an honor. Uh, as air miners, we need more gigaton thinking. Rapidly scalable solutions are now required. Red Carbon's go-to-market is an accelerated passive direct air capture system that will capture exponentially more CO2 than existing systems. Red Carbon's vision is to use and sequester carbon simultaneously in novel composite blocks, which we stack above ground, use as batteries, so we get paid twice. Red Carbon's system is rapidly scalable, is co-located, is self-sustaining. I'm recruiting co-founders and patient investors. I'm seeking $5 million to develop our proof of concept this is a passion project for me. I'm devoting the rest of my life to decarbonizing our atmosphere. Please reach me at Red Carbon Biz, biz that's Red Carbon B I Z, at gmail.com, or find me in the Air Miner Slack. I'm happy to receive DMs. Thank you for your attention, and thanks to the Air Miners crew for hosting this event, and to Tito, Jason, and Jeremy for the opportunity. Good evening. Thank you, Jack. Um, Richard, welcome back. And um, I'll, I'll hand it back to you and put myself back on mute, remembering that I'm on mute this time. All right, awesome. Hey, Jeremy, thanks for uh, take two on this one. Apologies to uh, folks this morning who uh, heard a rather corrupted audio, audio stream uh, from the middle of a clear cut. Um, hi, everyone, my name is Richard Hoth. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, introduce OfferAmp, the starting point for buyers intentionally offsetting through the voluntary carbon market. Over the past two months, the Air Miners Carbon Markets Problem Pack heard a consistent message from volunteer offset buyers, one echoed by Carbon 180 and perhaps your own experience. The buyer journey is high effort and confusing, even getting started, and leaves many exhausted, disempowered, and uncertain. Stripe, Microsoft, and more recently Mercado Libre had a more successful start to their carbon market journey by following an intentional process to thoughtfully describe their needs and quantify expected outcomes to the market. To scale the voluntary market 15-fold by 2030, there needs to be many more buyer companies making the same first step. OfferAmp is a climate tech startup focused on this one step of making this onboarding process possible for this new generation of buyers so they can efficiently and effectively signal their intent to the voluntary market. With a process that is repeatable and available through a carbons carbon standards framework delivered as a software service. I'm thinking that every company looking to enter the voluntary market should need to make room for a consulting team, with apologies to McKinsey, or start with a blank piece of paper wondering what questions to ask. 
Instead, off-ramp is their guide to frame their removal goals and co-benefit outcomes in a structure useful for alignment with sellers and projects like we've heard from today and other market actors. The approach with off-ramp is to do one thing well in the carbon journey and partner to provide the end-to-end -end solution. Every journey begins with the first step and thanks for making this possible for off-ramp today. Two specific asks to the community. One is your uh, any and all feedback and two, there are a few seats open at the founders table. Would love to connect. I will post more details on the Slack channel. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you, Richard. Nice to hear the full thing this time. Cheers. Um, Richard tried to uh, present this morning from a beautiful outdoor location. Unfortunately, we had some, some AV and some connection problems. Uh, so it was good to, good to get the full story this time. Um, so thanks again. And that is the end of our list. Although I have a gut feeling that we've got some other folks who may want to present. I actually think I saw a few joining and actually admitted a few folks uh, from the waiting room who I don't think had a chance earlier. So maybe if, if you want to present and you haven't had a chance to yet, uh, please go ahead and raise your hand. We've definitely got some time for you. Dylan's raising see a his hand. hand. I see a hand raising. Dylan. Well, I, I uh, presented this morning, um, so I wasn't going to take up space here, but if, uh, if you're looking for more people to present, I'll, I'll present again. <laughs> I think that's great. Um, okay, my name is Dylan Maxwell. I've been a climate activist uh, since, uh, for at least 30 years. Um, I started um, a new project, um, carbonface.org, which is a carbon trading um, platform peer-to-peer. -peer. So because there's a lot of people, I mean, I was selling uh, cook stoves in Asia for uh, many years, Baochop producing cook stoves. And uh, there's a lot of people throughout the world uh, sequestering uh, carbon in, with biochar and other ways who are not getting any credit for it. So this is the way uh, what inspired it was uh, to find a way for small uh, sequesters to get uh, some credit for what they're doing for the planet. Um, it also has a social network attached to it, a carbon face social. Uh, dot org, and I encourage everyone to go there and to join, uh, even if um, what you're doing has nothing to do with biochar. Um, it's a good place to um, to communicate and get the word out there. Uh, we haven't launched yet. Um, we're still working on our website. Uh, our tech guys um, in India are, are um, kind of slow, <laughs> um, but we're getting there, and we can do trading. Uh, we want to have a couple of people up there yet because we're not uh, really... Uh, approaching people, except in this forum, um, as, a, as a practice, I guess, and, and it's always good to network. Um, so please uh, join the social network, put up your profile pic, and uh, check out our, our website. Thanks very much. All right, thank you, Dylan. Any other last minute Final pitch presenters that would like to go. We've got a few uh, few minutes remaining. Definitely some open slots. Wilson. Yeah, yeah, I would like to go. If uh, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to present again. I, uh, I was just uh, waking up earlier today, so I feel uh, a lot better. <laughs> well, welcome back, and uh, yeah, we'll start your two minutes now. Okay, thank you, everybody. So I'm founder of Hago Energetics. So we're about carbon. Uh, Carbon reduction. Uh, our first project is going to be green hydrogen production in the Central Valley of California. We have a letter of intent with a big dairy farm over there. So we are intending to put a pilot over there um, and we're funded by the California Energy Commission. So we have a CalSeed grant uh, with them and that's going to be our first pilot. This is part of a broader overview of carbon reduction where we do carbon capture from uh, a variety of different sources. Um, one of them is going to be a power plant and we have a, a letter of intent for a power plant. They want to see our pilot uh, installed there. And so we're looking for funding for that. Um, uh, so overall, we are also going to be listed on a, um, in a, in a crowdfunding uh, platform um, by uh, hopefully by Earth Day. And so please look into that. Um, I'm looking for a co-founder who can help us uh, uh, on the business side, who can uh, help us uh, bring us to the next stage. So. I'm founder of Hago Energetics. Uh, you can look us up at hagoenergetics.com. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Wilson. Uh, okay, anyone else want to raise their hand for a pitch?
I'll give it a going once, going twice. Oh, I just said it. Raised it at the buzzer. At the buzzer. Okay, I, it's not really a pitch. I'm wondering if you could just have a quick poll of the people who are in attendance, if any of them would care to volunteer that, I mean, they don't have to give their full names, but how many people are we out there that actually are uh, maybe providing funding or just to know a little bit more about the characteristics of the group, not specifics, but that's something that you can do that uh, none of the others, I think would be interesting about the, the, the nature of the pitches and things that would go. So thanks. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine, but thanks. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Paul. The, um, so what, I think we had a bunch of folks kind of, uh, you know, come in that maybe hadn't signed up ahead of time. So we don't know the entire makeup of the group. It looks like there's about 22, 23 participants on the call. And it seems like we had uh, 11 or 12 pitch presenters. So uh, do the math. We got about 10 folks who are either spectators or potential funders. Um, if there are any potential, uh, or if there are any funders or investors on the line and they would like to make a, a plug or a reverse pitch, um, we're definitely, as I said earlier, welcome and, and open to that. Uh, so, so raise your hand uh, now would be a, a good moment to do that. Um, otherwise, Paul, um, yeah, I think that's really the, the, the best uh, sort of demographic rundown we can give you. All right. Okay, so uh, at this point, it looks like we are done with our pitch, our pitch presentations. Those were great. Thank you, everybody who uh, chose to spend some time, get up and share your idea. Uh, I think there's just so much value to that. And um, you never know what can come out of that, and what sort of introductions can be made um, as a result of uh, the exposure you just got. So uh, again, thank you. And thank yourself for, for taking the time and, and uh, effort to do that. Uh, if you're not part of the Air Miners Slack community and uh, and you're here, you're you're missing out. You really need to be part of the Air Miners Slack community. So just a quick plug uh, to get involved and um, definitely get yourself signed up for the Business Model Lab channel. Um, it's the one I moderate. I'm not saying it's the best one out there. But it's it's pretty good, and we really like to just foster a sense of community and um, just kind of show people like all the different either direct carbon dioxide removal business businesses and business models that are happening out there or all the sort of associated picks and shovels businesses. There is a giant ecosystem of um, potential markets to tap into and, uh, and businesses to start to really support this entire industry to get to, to where it needs to be. Um, at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Jason Grillo. He's got a couple of exciting announcements uh, and uh, take it away, Jason. Okay, thanks, Jeremy. And thanks to all of the presenters and thanks to all the audience members who made this such a really interesting and fun event. So it's wonderful to see so many, um, so, so many, in, so many great ideas coming to the fore. Uh, for some more thoughts about idea, how to get some air miners ideas coming to the fore, uh, we are announcing today that registration for our May 5th conference is now live. And for that, I'm going to share the link to the conference in the chat. If you haven't seen the, if you haven't seen the announcement already, uh, feel free to sign up. Uh, registration can be free or $10 with, uh, for a carbon negative contribution or for a 10x negative contribution can uh, contribute a little bit more. So looking forward to uh, seeing uh, many of you, all of you hopefully, at that event on the 5th. Also, uh, so that's announcement one. Announcement two is following up from our, uh, from a solicitation email we sent out maybe uh, three, four months ago about the start of a Air Miners Accelerator pro style program. We are starting our own Air Miners launch pad and the launch and the launch event for that launch pad will be on April 28th, Wednesday, April 28th, two weeks from today. So that is where uh, we aim to work with early stage uh, organizations such as yourselves to, uh, to bring them along to accelerate the pace at which they are developing. So for more on that, keep your eyes peeled and look to 
a uh, look to announcements and an event that we're going to have in two weeks time. So with that, uh, that's all the announcements and I look forward to seeing you at other Air Miners events.